I don't know about you, but I don't know if we ever really needed a new web browser. I mean, Google Chrome, Safari, they all kind of work okay, and we all know how to work with them. And just when we're up to speed, ChatGPT has now introduced a new era of AI-infused internet browsers. And I'm figuring it out as well. So in this video, I want to give you my full rundown. I have used ChatGPT Atlas, which is the new browser, and I want to walk you through what it can do for you should you use it and let you know kind of what's what. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So I'm here on the ChatGPT Atlas page, and we'll scroll through it just to get a heads up because this is a hard concept to grasp. We're kind of we understand ChatGPT. It's an app. You can go to the website, chatgpt.com. You can chat with it. It does a bunch of stuff. How does this work into a browser? Now, we're going to dive into it. I have it on my computer, but let's just get a quick little context here. What this does is at the surface level, so you can see on my screen here, you're going to be able to now, wherever you're at, ha start a ChatGPT conversation that has full awareness of what you're doing because it's right there in the sidebar. That's a kind of a huge benefit because when I'm browsing and if I have ChatGPT in one tab and maybe I'm reading a news article in the other tab, I'd have to copy and paste snippets from one article and then go over to ChatGPT and ask about it and maybe take a screenshot of something and send it over to chat. Now it's going to be right there by your side. That's kind of cool. Another cool thing that I want to dive in here, we'll do a workshop with, is doing agent mode. Agent mode is wild, and we're going to cover what that is. It's going to be able to go do grunt work for you and actually do stuff on your behalf. And because it's inside of an entire browser, I'll actually be able to have it work inside of my Google account, have it work inside of my website, have it work inside of my Amazon account even. And we'll show you some examples of that in this video. And similar to other tools we're used to, it'll be able to just be context aware. If we're sending an email, it'll be able to be there inside the email and help you out. So kind of like the the different plugins we've used in the past, this is kind of all of that in one, all right? Uh, the one thing I will let you know right up front, it says we're in control. Are we really? <laughs> I feel like we might be grasping at straws at this point of who's in control, but let's go ahead and figure it out. Let's play around with it. So you can download it right now. It says it's uh, available for the newer M1 and above Mac uh, browsers. That's what I'm on. It's on Windows as well. So I'm here inside of the Atlas browser on my computer. So if you just open up a new tab, it looks kind of like Chrome. I'll go ahead and uh, show you my the full window here. It opens up like a chat. It doesn't really feel like a web browser. So I'm, you're kind of disoriented if you're used to standard web browsers. If I search for, let's say, google.com, Okay, that looks familiar. We're all kind of used to what this looks like. But what's kind of cool is if I were to do a regular search, let's say um, best running shoes size 10 for marathons. I don't know about you, I'm used to it going to Google and having a bunch of results and then Gemini at the top. Now here, it's gonna go straight into a chat GPT conversation because of course, that is the power behind all this. All right, so now it feels like we're just inside of chat GPT. If you've used it on the browser, uh, this is what it feels like. Okay, I'm used to this. It also has some different spots up here. You know, this is just like Google. I can go to the Google search results and, oh, okay, this feels more like Google. I gotcha. You can go to the images. You're doing an image search now. All right, this is all feeling, it's like a little bit different, but not really news articles. Okay, it's just a bit more of a default experience is now you're in chat versus a search result. And that makes a lot of sense to me because I don't know about you, but I've gotten to where the if I want to figure out new information, I don't go to Google first anymore. I go to chat GPT first. It just seems faster. It gives me the results. So this makes sense. This. So now let's go ahead and see how else this can be used. I'm going to go to one of our websites. I'm going to go to freedombynumber.com. This is one of our e-commerce shops. And I can go ahead and browse around like it's a normal web browser. But I've got this button up here that's called chat GPT, ask chat GPT. And so now, whereas before I would be used to being in this dedicated chat that wasn't really connected to the internet or, or wasn't like context to a page, but now I can have that as a sidebar and I can ask, uh, could you give me some ideas how I could use this product? And I can include a chat 
where I don't need to send the link of what I'm looking at. I don't need to send screenshots of what I'm looking at. This is, look at that, oh, it's a very versatile product. So now it's fully context aware. There are similar uh, tools like this, like Vision that's trying to watch what you're doing and helping you out. But this looks extremely user friendly because this allows you to not have to feel like you have to start up a different tool to be able to have this work with me type of experience, hugely beneficial here. And what's even crazy is, let's say you wanna ask, is this website legit? I hope so, it's mine. And so here we go. It's able to go through all the work of, what I was expecting it to do, <laughs> this is awesome, is, uh, before, when I asked it that same question, it said, yes, it's your website, John. It, it knew so much about me from us working with ChatGPT that it was like, yeah, obviously this is legit, this is your site. So it didn't do that for you. Uh, that's kind of a bummer, it was fun for me. But having the chat and the sidebar, is it a game-changing feature? Not really, but I could see myself using this on a daily basis, uh, which is a huge plus. All right, now this is one that is absolutely wild, and if you haven't seen this before, prepare to have your socks blown off. So the other feature that I think is really fancy about this is agent mode right here. So this is where you get to ask ChatGPT to perform complex tasks in the browser for you. I'm gonna click on this, it's just gonna change into agent mode, and you can have it actually do stuff for you. So um, something my daughter and I, we've been really interested in is finding like fun, we've got a lot of extra protein powder in the, in the, in the household, so we've been finding recipes to use with high protein and uh, stuff that's kind of like junk food, but it's tasty. So let's go ahead. We've done pancakes. They're awesome. So here I put in, let's research a list of brownie recipes that are high protein, low carbs, and make a Google spreadsheet with all the information. So because it knows I'm logged in, it's going to give me permission or it's going to give the agent permission to work on services that it has access to because I'm logged into it. This is getting a little creepy, guys. I'll be honest with you. We're going to go through the pros and cons in just a bit. Uh, but what this is going to allow us to do is I will send this out, and I'm logged into one of my Google accounts right now in this browser. So as it's going through, finding recipes, doing all the grunt work, picking things out, um, it's going to be able to actually use my Google account instead of having to create like a Excel spreadsheet that I have to download then put into someplace else. And now it's off to the races. So you can see here, it's made a plan for what it's going to do. You can actually see it's going to show over here what it's working for. It's looking for macros because it, it saw I was interested in low carb, high protein. And now it's going through and doing the work. Now, as it's working here, anytime you want to, you can stop it or you could take control of the process. Now, I'm not going to in this example because I'm not really worried about anything going wrong, but if it actually starts to like ship out products for you or buy things for you, you might wanna watch. And what's cool about this, <coughs> excuse me, is this is running in a tab. So I can continue my day and it actually shows up here a little cursor that shows that things are moving on this little project. And look at that. I, Go away for a second, and now it has moved into, this is one of my Google accounts. It's analyzing data, and it is in the process of filling out this spreadsheet. And I'll pause the video right now while it's doing the, th the thing. So you see here, it's still working. It's not done yet, but it's already started to add in recipe names, sources, ingredients, proteins per serving, carbs, and calories per serving. And also has key ingredients here. So obviously a spreadsheet with multiple recipes isn't the best to put all the ingredients on. And it looks like it is done. You can see it stopped. The little overlay that was on the screen here is over. It's no longer showing that indicator that it's working. It's even named my Google spreadsheet. And it's done. So I can, now it's mine. I can do whatever I want to with it. And so as an example, it found one, two, three, four, six recipes here with the ingredients, what it's working with. Here's one that's 128 calories per serving, and I can go click through and work on it. This is awesome. Am I gonna use this every single day? Probably not, but this is essentially having your own virtual assistant that has access to the things you need them to have access to. And like any virtual assistant, you do need some oversight. You have to make sure it's doing the right thing. But this agent feature, while I'm still figuring out the best way to use it on my own, I can see this actually being a tangible benefit versus just a 
fancy feature that you could have. All right, let's talk about some of the things that I really love about the ChatGPT Atlas browser. Number one, it is a very natural experience. It doesn't try to totally reinvent the wheel. You can still go to uh, any websites. You can go to Facebook. You can go to, it's, it's a browser, okay? We all know what browsers are and it has all the kind of universal uh, keyboard shortcuts. Like I, for if I wanna make a new tab, I can do Command T and I've got a new tab. So some of that is the same. And even though my brain is still working through uh, the translation from Google Chrome or Safari into this new browser, it is quite natural. My the way I search today is on ChatGPT. This is how I search. And you can see it's still got some of the autocomplete and some of the things that you are familiar with, let's call, call creature comforts. So it's actually rather natural for being as revolutionary as it really is. Another thing I love is that unlike other browsers that I've used, at least on Mac, it works with the entire system. So if I get, let's say, a text message as a two-factor authentication, one thing I love about Safari is I can just wait for a second and then it'll autofill directly into that field because Safari just all works together. And this works the same way, which I think is just really, really convenient, a nice creature comfort. Uh, it really feels integrated in with your computer because it does ask you to give some permissions when you're setting it up to have like access to your disk. And there's a lot of stuff. We're gonna get into the negatives in just a bit, but uh, it does feel natural uh, working with it as a browser. So let's go ahead and talk about that. The things that I am not super keen on here. Uh, number one is because you know we run an online business, there's a lot of Chrome plugins and extensions and tools that we're used to. To the best of my knowledge, I have not been able to figure out how to get those extensions working here inside of the Atlas browser. It is built on Chromium, so it might just be a matter of time, or maybe Chrome and Atlas are just battling and bickering right now. But if there are tools you like to use, like for me, I like to track my Facebook pixel on my browser or have make like a color picker, little things like that. Uh, currently, I don't have a solution for that. If you guys know of solutions to get your Chrome plugins and extensions into the Atlas browser, let me know in the description below. I'd very much appreciate it. So that is a bummer. Another bummer, just little things like having vertical tabs and things of more mature browsers can bring in, more full-featured browsers bring in. You know, this is relatively new. And the biggest con, and this is one that is not just like a nice to have, it's a serious concern, is just how much of my data is being collected and used. I know that if this is a free browser, you guys know if there's a service out there that's free, then you are the uh, product, You're, you are the reason for it being free. And so I know that our data is being captured by this. Now, is it gonna be used for good or for evil? <laughs> well, we'll have to decide uh, for ourselves here, but definitely Google Chrome, notorious for collecting your data and doing whatever it wants with it. Safari, a little bit more privacy focused. Uh, ChatGPT, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and say they're probably gonna be worse than Google. <laughs> so you have to take that. Uh, you know, if you're not doing anything you're worried about, go ahead, it's totally fine. Me, I'm not worried about it. I don't think it's gonna be, a, the, I, I'm a rather optimist when it comes to AI, but that is definitely something I wanna make sure you're aware of. This is a little bit new, not a huge track record on that yet. So let's wrap it up. Uh, should you use this browser? Uh, I'm gonna say probably. And the reason for that is even in the first little bit of the first few minutes of me using it, I realized that it was getting natural very fast, meaning it keeps a lot of the same things we're used to with keyboard shortcuts and it feels like a browser after the first five seconds. You're like, what, what's going on here? It gets very natural very fast, yet it adds in something that I think is a true benefit of having the ability to pop out a ChatGPT conversation, which is fully not only context aware of you because you're logged into your ChatGPT account, but also it's, it's context aware of what you're working on right now and is able to bring all that in. That I think is going to be a daily benefit for anybody who uses the uh, this browser. So that's a good reason to test it out. Um, I'm sure that as it matures, there's gonna be you know, the Chrome extensions, they're gonna figure that out. There's gonna be a solution to that. Again, if you know one, let me know in the comments. Uh, but I think that's gonna be worthwhile using. If you're a chat GPT user, which if you're not, you know, you're probably using a different software, or a different AI chat, and that's fine too. Um, the whole privacy concern, it is a real concern. Uh, it, if you're more nervous about that, that's fine. You can use your old browser. Just know that every browser is going to have AI built into it. So you can either adapt it or try to hold off as long as you can. Up to you. But I, so far, I think from a first 
a glance, being able to have an agent working through for you while you're browsing. It feels like two people working together, collaborating, which I think is the ultimate goal of AI to help us do better things faster. For example, while I was researching, getting ready for this, I, me and some buddies of mine, we want to do some of those adventure races. So it, it went through and found all the Tough Mudders, all the Spartan races, Savage Race, in the next six months, where it's going, the distances, and let me go. Like, I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I just haven't because it's annoying researching and building up ideas and all that stuff. And it's able to do that and not just in a chat where I then have to do something else with it. It's here inside of a Google spreadsheet for myself. So I think all that's pretty awesome. And for a new product, I think they've done a great job. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoy content like this, trying to figure out the new AI tools and how to be ahead of it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.